had a good night's sleep with the sound of the waves crashing down there below me and woke up to a beautiful view. Both of the neighboring vehicles had already left by the time I woke up, but uh, a Jeep who drove by stopped for a second, complimented my camper, and then uh, told me he knew some good roads into the mountains from here. But uh, unfortunately, I had to tell him, like, the only place I need to find right now is a bathroom. And I headed off down the highway instead of following him. And uh, quickly I found a seafood restaurant that wasn't open yet, but they let me in and let me use the bathroom. So uh, then I also... Uh, got the internet from there and checked off a few spots along the road that I wanted to make sure to stop at because uh, there isn't much uh, cell service out in some of the places around the around the national park there the Cape Breton Highlands National Park just a beautiful spot this northern bit of Cape Breton so headed off down the road with mountains all around and the road would go in and out of the coast or in more mainland in behind the mountains up and down valleys and I really uh, really got the test of my truck today some of these hills I had to crawl up them in second gear not going very fast but uh, in a lot of spots the speed limit wasn't very fast to begin with because you'd end up on a downhill stretch where it goes down for a long time and if you weren't thinking about checking your speed you'd get out of control really quickly it's nice having the stick shift in the truck just to put it in third gear on a downhill stretch and let the engine slow me down not not have to burn up the brakes holding them the whole time and just uh, just an amazing landscape I didn't know we had anything like this in Canada all the bays and coves and the coastal mountains sloping down to it it's amazing getting hard to edit these videos because I don't want to cut anything out but I can't upload all of it really until I have maybe when I have a good stable internet connection and, and I'm settled down for a bit I'll I'll put up the unedited hours long driving bits because I'm sure there's some people out there who would want to see that but for now I try and pick and choose the best of the best of the clips it's uh oh it's just unbelievable words and pictures don't do it justice when it's all around you it's immense there's lots of people along the route it seems to be it's, well it's it's world famous for its views so there's tons of campers tons of cars and uh, a surprising amount of bicycles the the uphill stretches on a bike would be pretty rough but then the downhill stretches would just be glorious and then on a bike you you move slower through the scenery you're you're in it more than you are in a truck i got the window down and really get a good sense of my surroundings as i go but being in a truck you're still separated from it so luckily, uh, every five or ten minutes on the road, there was a place you could stop and oh, lookout spots and just little parking spots like right beside the road that you can stop and stretch your legs and take a good take a good view of the scenery and it's. It's a great thing that they've done with this chunk of our country here. Keeping it wild and beautiful, but 
building enough into it that people can check it out easily. So one of the spots I marked off on my uh, map to make sure to check out was this uh, this short hiking trail that leads to a thing called the the Lone Shiling. But it's this awesome stone hut that they've built out in the woods here. It's a uh, it's a really neat thing to see. It's built to match one that's on the Isle of Skye over in Scotland. And uh, it's just to the spe exact sort of, it's historically accurate, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And the hiking trail there goes through all this old growth maple forest where signs said some of the trees there are 300 years old. I didn't know they could get that old. And yet, yeah, there's tons of these spots all along the r route. I, I should have just took the time to stop at each and every single one. It would take me a, a week or so to get around the loop if I did that. But I uh, picked three or four that really caught my eye on the map and figured I'll go for those. I can't see everything. And I'm glad I stopped at that one. That's a neat bit of architecture there with thatched roof on it and the stone building style of it. Uh, yeah, because the, the Highlands National Park here, really, it deserves its name the same way Nova Scotia does. It's, it feels like what you'd think Scotland would be like. Which I guess makes sense because they're both northern Atlantic islands. I stopped here at a uh, pull-off to catch a good view of the scenery. And to clean the camera off because it was raining just a little bit. But, uh, oh, the picture doesn't do it justice. This valley here that I was overlooking. It goes so deep down there and then... All you, all you can see is a little trickle of a stream. Yeah, didn't stay there for too long, though. Other people were stopping. You can't hog the parking spots for very long, really. So back down this steep slope, windy, turny. Oh, it's, it's fun to drive down this highway, these mountain roads. Yeah, it... It'd probably be nice on a motorcycle, too. I see some people traveling that lightly and think that'd be pretty nice. The truck is a little bit bulky, but then I see people with a full bus-sized camper pulling a trailer behind them and wonder what they could need all that stuff for. Probably a whole family in there. But I wouldn't want to navigate one of those down these roads. The truck's good enough. The truck's able to get down some uh, bumpy old dirt roads that I wouldn't want to take a camper down. I stopped here at uh, another hiking trail sort of a spot. And for a second I almost parked at the outer parking lot until I realized this dirt path is is long and you're supposed to drive down it so headed off through there towards the mica hill hiking trail it's a off and on rainy sort of a day so i took my chances going out there and i made it a decent way like the sign at the head of the trail said to get to the very end and come back should be a good three, three and a half hours. So I, uh, I didn't take the kitty cat with me, which is really a good thing. She got, she got enough exercise for a little bit over at the, the stone hut trail. And I'm glad I didn't take her because it, the rain gradually got worse as I walked out there and it was a, a beautiful walk 
through a little bit of forest and then out into this open tundra sort of area. Tiny, tiny little trees, scrub bushes, lichen all over everything, moss. It's a beautiful place to go walking, but yeah, it gradually got rainier and rainier until uh, until I also reached the end of the gravel path and it was turning into muddy dirt path, so... I turned around, and then on my way out, it just kept raining harder and harder, and yeah, I had to, had to change out of my wet clothes once I got back to the truck. I got soaked so bad, but it was worth it. Still haven't seen too much wildlife really on the trip other than that that mink in the rocks the other day with the kitty cat. See signs every now and then for moose and oh well I'll get pretty excited if I see a moose. <laughs> seen plenty of deer in my lifetime but a, new, uh, a moose is a whole nother level of it. Those things are so huge. I'm sure to see one I'm sure to see one in Newfoundland when I get there. They're supposed to be teeming with moose. So yeah, back out through the dirt path. And the rain had softened it up a bit already. None too none too bad though. And uh Back down the road, down the Cabot Trail, it's just, uh, it's just an amazing place. I understand now why so many people told me that I couldn't, couldn't miss it, had to do it. Yeah, Leo back in Montreal told me that, and, oh, I forget who else has told me about it along the way. Some other travelers, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, this big loop around the coastline that they call the Cabot Trail, it's an amazing piece of our country. I almost started to worry, starting around the loop, about, uh, about gas, because I, I saw a sign a little bit, too late that said um, no gas for such and such miles and I looked at my fuel tank the fuel gauge and got thinking to myself I, I'll, I'll have enough I, sh I shouldn't worry about that but then as I got going the steep hills you have to climb I got wondering am I gonna burn off more gas than I usually would for the distance like, it would really suck to be stuck out here, have to get the jerry can out and hitch a ride with someone and do it that way. I, for a little while, I kept the can full all the time until uh, one hot day I looked in the cab of the truck and it was burping all, leaking all over the place. Like, uh, the the seal must not be too good on the cap it was bubbling out there from the heat so i haven't kept my jerry can full since then i guess now that the weather's getting cooler i should because that was a month or so ago now that was back in ontario or quebec but it had me worried gas leaking all over in the truck like it did but, uh, yeah, now with the cooler weather, I should start carrying a jerry can, a, like, full one, especially when I go through Newfoundland. Long stretches between gas stations are exciting. <laughs> Some wild land. So my next stop here was at uh, a beach near Inganish where I got the kitty cat out to walk around, and I kind of 
kind of planned on staying there for the night until, uh, until I saw a sign again that said no overnight parking. So I let the cat out to play and she's taken to climbing six or seven feet up every tree that she comes across. And then climbing back down on her own. So if she goes a little bit higher, I'm going to just trust that she can get back down. The waves on the beach here were so wild there. There was a sign that said no swimming today. Not that I really felt like it anyways. It's pretty cool out and pretty cold water, I'm pretty sure. So we walked up and down the coastline. The kitty cat played with seagull feathers that she finds. and She gets up, uh, she gets up to some mischief. She was playing in under the overhang of these tree roots. And then I looked away for just a minute and she climbed up top. Like where I'm not sure if we're supposed to go. She climbed up into the forest above the beach. And I just kind of had to pick her up and take her back to the camper. Then a park employee came along and said like, well, you can't camp here, but follow me down the road a bit to this campsite where you are allowed to. So here I am for the night with some tents and cabins around me. Not too bad.